everyone, it's Julia. I have a couple things that were sent to me, a couple different people. This wonderful quilt square, it's just quilted fabric, and she sent several of them. And I, I love it. it's a different fabric on the back side, and it just has that really washed feel to it. And I'm going to make a journal cover and share with you how I make these. And also, someone sent me these, and they're just like these fabric panels, just parts of the fabric panel. Just thought they were adorable. She also has an Etsy store. It's called Quilted Frog Studio, and I'll link that down below for you. But this just gives me a doll theme, paper doll kind of a vibe, and that's where I'm going to go with this journal. The first thing I'm going to do is I have a piece of silk ribbon, and I'm going to just edge finish this. This is one of the easiest ways to do a journal. I just love this method and I hope you give it a try. I'm just zigzagging this and I have it just hugged really close to the edge. Just going around the corner and again I'm just my my zigzag is set, set quite wide about like a six so it just kind of catches both. And here's what it looks like. Just love it, easy way to finish it off. I'm taking out my Inktense pencils once again, and I'm going to add some color to this cute little doll figure here. I'm gonna use my aloe vera gel to do the activating. I also have some water off to the side, and um, I'm believing I'm using a round brush. I have four different colors picked out. I'm just gonna I have that quilt piece off to the side and I'm kind of matching some of the colors to that. Doing some greens and some blues. This is a blue and notice I just lightly, you could hardly even see it, but I just lightly added that with that pencil and then I'm activating it with this gel. Now Inktense pencils are washable. This particular journal will not be probably washed because I, I will have, have some cardboard in it. Um, but this aloe vera too, you might want to do some testing whether that makes it not washable or not. I haven't tested it yet. Just kind of add some color to this face just by adding a little bit of pink to the lips and to the cheeks. Just love the way this turned out. It's just real subtle but just adds enough. Now for this little dress and hat. It's just kind of a rose color that I'm going to going to um, use for the color on this. And this is going to be put on the inside on, in a, on a pocket. Now this gel is pretty thick and I did add a little bit of water to it. But once it's activated, this the color just pops. I have my um, heat and bond light. I'm going to add some, it's like a paper adhesive, and I'm going to add that to the back. So this, the adhesive side is down, and I'll be just pressing these on. And then I'm just going to cut around. This one I'm going to leave as, a, as the rectangle shape. And this one I'm going to fussy cut. Just cut completely around the little gal. Now I'm going to remove that backing, but before I iron it on, I want to get the placement of this hidden spine. This is a piece of a, car a cardboard that I cut. It's about an inch, about an, a little bit over an inch wide, and then the almost the full length of that. I just want to make sure I've, I get her in the right place, so I just added that. It, it'll be taken off in a little bit, but now I can go ahead and press her down into place. More about that spine later. Um, I'm going to work on the pocket. This is just a piece of muslin that I turned in the edges. And then the top of it I turned down twice. And that's going to go right in the back of this little journal. And I'm going to put this on just to decorate the pocket. Just thought that would be cute. I'm going to go back to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch this little lady on. But the pocket I'm going to just do fi finish the, the applique. I'm not going to sew it in right now. Um, I'm going to wait until I get my spine in to get that pocket into place. 
I'm just free motioning this little figure on. I have cream colored thread on, just an all purpose thread. My feed dogs are dropped and I'm just outlining this and then outlining parts of her little um, apron and her hat. I just wanted to have a quilted look on the back side of the journal. And you can see how cute that is. And then the back side, you can see her little figure. Just love it. And now my pocket is done as far. I also put a little bit of that ribbon on the top. I just thought that looked cute. Next for this hidden spine, I'm just using my fabric fuse glue and I'm going to glue this piece of cardboard onto a scrap piece of fabric. I want to make sure I have about an inch on the sides of, and then also an inch on the top and the bottom. The top and the bottom now I'm just going to glue those into place and fold that over. But the sides I'm also going to glue but I'm not going to fold it all the way over. I'm just going to fold it back to meet that cardboard. So I have a little Oh, a little lip there. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. I love using this type of a spine for this, for a quilted piece of fabric like this, um, because it, it still is soft, but then the spine has some structure to it. I just added two little dots right on that cardboard I'm just spaced them evenly apart and just using my crop a dial to punch those. You can also just use an owl or uh, all or some sort of punch for that. I have my two millimeter elastic and I'm just stringing this through and you can see what I'm going to do there and just tying a knot. I'm going to do the, the same with the other two holes. So this is going to be a journal with two separate signatures. And the signatures will just slip right underneath this elastic. Now for an all over glue, and then this is just going to be, I just kind of eyeball it, but you want it in the center. And now for that pocket, I I think I, yeah, I just put the pocket right over the top of that. So I can sew that pocket into place. Now it has dried. I'm going to put that, you want this glue to be dry. Um, and then I'm going to stitch right alongside that, that cardboard and then a, about a quarter of an inch away from that. So you can see I didn't do it at my sewing machine, but you can see I have two parallel lines going all the way down just adds a really neat look. And then that pocket, I just sewed right through it. You don't even see the stitching. So that is complete. Now for the pages. I tell you, this is the cutest digital and I'm going to link her store down below. It's Pixie Dust Files. I think she has a sale on this particular um, collection too. It has the little papers. I'm just going to fold those. And then these I just put on a cardstock and they're the most adorable ephemera and even has like a little paper doll and cute tags. Just love it. So those I'm going to add to my little book. I have some tea dyed paper I'm going to add. And then I have a collection of some of my paper doll that uh, I used to love playing with paper dolls. So I collect these. And next I have some, a collection of vintage quilt blocks that I found at the flea market. And I went and I scanned these and these are available in my Etsy shop and I will link that down below. Um, they just make wonderful pages. I have some samples of them here. Um, I think they're just going to add just a cool look into any kind of journal. Um, you can also tear pieces of it and add these to um, collages. I also did a, a just this is on cardstock. I printed it on cardstock. Make wonderful little note cards or covers, and also some journaling cards. So again, that link will be down below if you're interested in that. I have this little gal all filled now. I did add some of that silk ribbon for ties, but I want to share with you. Um, I, I'll do a flip through at the end here too. But these. I just folded and cut the pages down, kind of put the tags and everything in the way I want it. And I do not have at this point any, um, it, uh, they're not, it's not bound at all. And you can just 
go ahead and just use your journal like this and just slip these under the elastic. But I am gonna use a, a pamphlet stitch on this. You can do them either way. Sometimes it's nice not to, not to do the pamphlet stitch and just leave them loose because then you can add pages easily and take pages out. But I'm gonna share this with you too. I'm just using, again, three holes right in the center. I'm using a baker's twine, which is like a heavier cord, and then just doing this easy um, pamphlet stitch and just tying it in the middle. And I'll do the same to the other little signature. And it's as easy as that, and then you can just slip it back underneath that elastic. I'm gonna add a quick flip through in the back here. You can kind of see some of the tags that I added and the pockets and just how I placed things. I added just about all of that collection from Pixie Dust Files and also several of my quilt scans and you'll see them throughout. I did add some lace and trim to the edges of some of the papers. This was a cute little booklet with one of the quilt scans. I just hope this gives you some ideas of where you can, can just add to and the paper dolls were so cute in some of the pockets. Thank you everybody who's joined me today. I hope you have a chance to create this week. Bye for now.